Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing our product review for the Ninja Everclad 12-piece stainless steel cookware set. Do these deserve a spot in your kitchen? Watch this video and find out. So you ready? Let's get into this. Just a quick note, our reviews are based upon the things that we think are important. That might be a little bit different for you, so what we recommend doing is after watching our video, you watch a couple of different videos made by other content creators. That way you get a little bit wider range of opinions and that'll help you make a much more informed buying decision. And that is the most important thing of all. Here is the entire set laid out. It comes with a six quart stock pot with a lid, just like that. You get a three quart saute pan, also with a lid. A 12 inch fry pan with a lid. This thing is huge. huge. A one and a half quart saucepan with a lid. A two and a half quart saucepan, also with a lid. An eight inch fry pan. And a 10 and a quarter inch fry pan. You can see that these two pans don't come with lids, but the lid for the saute pan will also fit on the 10 and a quarter inch fry pan. Unfortunately though, none of the lids that come with the set will fit on the small 8-inch pan. Hi, uh, Uncle Roger, one of the superstars. That was really kind of a bummer. I was sort of hoping they'd size them in such a way to where everything was going to be covered. So in case you weren't keeping track, you get 7 pans, but you only get 5 lids. The construction and workmanship in all these pans are all the same, so we're going to focus on one of these pans to show you the construction, and that way you'll be able to save a whole bunch of time because they're all built exactly the same way. All the pans have stainless steel handles that are riveted on the inside here. We beat these things up pretty good and we didn't have any problem with these rivets starting to come loose or anything like that. The surface on the handle is a combination of brushed stainless steel and kind of shiny polished stainless steel. And you can see up close here that even after a couple of months of hard use, they're still nice and shiny. There's no real visible scratches or anything else like that on there. You got a nice little ninja logo etched into the surface. Very cute. And the actual pans have a three-ply construction. The inner layer that you actually cook on is 1810 stainless steel. The lower layer is 180 stainless steel. 180 is a little bit more susceptible to corrosion and rust, but it's also magnetic. That's what enables these to work on induction ranges. Sandwiched in between the two layers of stainless, you have one layer of aluminum. The aluminum layer helps distribute the heat evenly across the pan. Without that in there, if these were just straight up stainless, you'd have hot spots all over the place. So if you're shopping around for stainless pans, always make sure they got extra layers in there, whether they be copper, aluminum, or a combination of the two. If you were wondering, the reason the inner layer is called 1810 stainless is the fact that it is 18% chromium and 10% nickel. The 18-0 on the outside is 18% chromium and 0% nickel. 18-0 covers a pretty wide range of 400 series metals. And what you usually end up getting in there is a little bit of iron or something like that. That's why it's magnetic. The 1810 always goes on the inside because that's the safest to cook on. One of the key features about these pans is they're rated to be able to handle 600 degrees in your oven. That's a really high number. A lot of times pans in this range are closer to 400 or 350 degrees. That's really important because if they overheat, they're going to warp. The pans are rated to 600, but whenever you add the lid, that's not rated to 600 degrees. So Ninja says that these lids can't sit on the pan for more than 30 minutes or so inside the oven. I would just say, don't use your lids inside the oven anyway because why risk messing up your stuff? And really when you have stuff in the pan, you're throwing it in the oven, you're doing that to finish it. If you're covering it up, you're going to make it a lot more humid inside the pan and you're probably going to wreck your crust. The lids have a little polished stainless ring and also stainless steel handles that are modeled the same way they are with the handles on the actual pans. They're also riveted on. And really the only gripe I have about these things is that they don't have a hole drilled in them for ventilation. Why that is, I really don't know. As a result, since they don't have a hole to release pressure, if you build up heat in this pan and it's sitting on your range, this will chatter a little bit when it builds up pressure because it's trying to let that air out. It's not really that big a deal, but I'll admit, I was a little bit annoyed by that. Ninja says that the construction on these doesn't contain any harmful chemicals, so that's really good because a lot of times you end up with a chemical coating on here for whatever reason. These don't have that, so that's really good to hear. Ninja has given out a limited lifetime warranty on these, which at first you're gonna think, whoa, that's freaking great. It's a lifetime warranty, but there's always a catch. 
It's a limited lifetime warranty if you use these pans in a way that's consistent with the recommendations of Ninja. So that means stuff like proper preheating, not overheating your pans, which honestly should be kind of hard to do, not throwing the lids into the oven, you know, so on and so forth. Ninja says that these are totally dishwasher safe and a lot of websites say that about stainless steel pans in general, but you know what? I beg to differ. I don't like putting anything in the dishwasher that doesn't have to go in there. These pans you should hand wash. And if you take into account the materials that these are made out of and think about it a little bit, you're probably going to agree with me. That inside 1810 layer is non-corrosive. But the 18-0 layer on the side isn't the same. It contains a little bit of iron and other metals and is a lot more susceptible to corrosion and rust. Normally that shouldn't be a problem, but if it's sitting in a dishwasher for a long time, it's got standing water sitting on it, that could actually start to corrode the surface. And if it doesn't corrode it, it could stain it really bad. A lot of times when you wash stainless steel pans in a dishwasher, you start seeing little dark spots showing up all over the place. That's really the result of doing something like that. Also, if you leave these in the sink with water in them and just let them sit there for a couple of days and you just don't really do anything with them and they get piled underneath a bunch of dishes. If it stays moist around them, you can get a little bit of corrosion on these. So that's not necessarily a knock against Ninja or anything like that. That's just the non-1810 stainless steels in general. So you really need to be a little bit more careful with these. Don't assume that they're going to be indestructible because they're not. Also, everybody likes to say that you can use any kind of utensils that you want on stainless steel pans. So that means stainless steel utensils, right? I mean, that's why a lot of people buy these things because you can't use them on anything else. But guess what? Stainless steel can scratch, definitely. And it doesn't really take all that much effort to do it. Here, I'll show you really quick. This is the two and a half quart saucepan from our set. And it's also the saucepan that I use whenever I do all the ice cream videos on the channel. Oftentimes when I'm heating stuff up in this pan, I will use a metal whisk. And just doing this over and over again on this pan, you can see if you look really close at the surface, I don't know how well you can see this on camera, I'm gonna move it around a little bit so you can sort of see that. You should be able to see all those scratches down in the base of the pan. That's what happens when you use metal utensils in a stainless steel pan. It can do that. Is it going to hurt it? No, not really. A little bit scratch still performs perfectly well. That doesn't really bother me at all. It just means I'm using the thing, right? But it's also the only pan that I have that's got any scratches on the inside at all because it's also the only one that I've used the stainless steel utensils on. If you're the kind of person that hates seeing scratches on your cookware and you want to keep them super pristine, just make sure that you're using Teflon utensils on these and then you're not going to have a problem. If you use metal, be prepared for it to scratch a little bit. That also goes for the outside surface of this. This is the polished stainless steel and you can see right there I got a little bit of a scratch and that's just from being in the cabinet rubbing up against other pans. So I mean you get the scratches and you can't really buff it out all that well. I've got another pan that's a little bit worse in that regard. You can see right here that that rubbed up against one of the saucepans in the set and it just kind of scuffed that up a little bit. When you rub your hand over it you can't even feel it but it is there. So what I recommend is if you've got a hanging pot rack or something like that, you'd end up utilizing that to kind of save these a little bit. Same thing happens on the handle a little bit there too. But keep in mind, this is after two months of pretty hard use on these. So, I mean, they've held up really, really well. As far as weight goes on these, they're sort of in the middle. As a rule of thumb, you don't want really super light stainless steel pans. If you get them and they're about as light as a non-stick pan, then that means they're crap. crap. Definitely want something that's at least three ply, which is three layers of metal, and that just has weight to it. They make five ply and seven ply pans as well from different companies, and obviously those are heavier. I think these have a nice happy medium between being super light and being too heavy. The only thing in the set that I think is a little bit heavy is the 12 inch fry pan, and that's because it's a 12 inch fry pan. I'm 6'2 and I have pretty big hands, and that's how big this pan is. And just so you can see how much this weighs, we'll just weigh the one pan. And you can see that this thing is 1,561 grams, 62 actually, or 55 ounces. So that's pretty close to four pounds. A little bit heavy, but that's just because of the size of the pan. And just for comparison's sake, if you're talking about something like an eight or a 10 inch cast iron pan, those are probably gonna be almost 
double the weight of this. Other than the two blemishes that I showed you, all the pans look pretty much like this. They're all almost absolutely perfect, aren't they? No dings, no scratches, no dents or anything like that. Most of the bombs are pretty nice and shiny. Not really even a whole lot of scratches down here on the uh, contact surface. You can see here where the model number and the size of the pan and the Ninja logo is. That's pretty faded out from scrubbing. That started out looking something like that. So do you care about that fading out? I don't. Hey, by the way, if this is your first time here and you want to learn some cool new recipes, get some great cooking tips and tricks and all sorts of other kitchen related things, then start now by subscribing to the channel and clicking the notification bell so you never miss a thing. For testing, first we check to see how long these pans take to preheat. The way we knew when the pans were properly preheated was by doing the mercury ball test. Basically all that is is you start preheating the pan on medium heat and you check to see how long it takes for little bits of water put onto the surface of the pan to turn into little balls that look a little bit like mercury. If the pan's preheated enough, those turn into the little mercury balls right away. And if it isn't heated up enough, they just kind of burn off. The smaller pans took slightly less time and the larger pans were slightly more but they all came out in the ballpark of right around seven and a half minutes. You might think that seven and a half minutes is a long time to preheat a pan, but really it isn't if you're preheating the pan properly. If you're patient enough to let those preheat properly, then the surface of your stainless steel pan is gonna be almost non-stick. Trust me, that makes your life a heck of a lot easier. Once the pan was properly preheated, we used an infrared thermometer to measure the temperature on different spots in the pan. There was a tiny bit of fluctuation, but for the most part, it was pretty even all the way across the surface. Since that kind of test isn't always the best way to check something like that, we took a big slab of meat, threw it in our preheated pan, and let a nice crust form on it. Once it had been a few minutes, we flipped it over and checked it out. We also did that test with a few different meats, and you can see on every single one of them, that crust is almost perfectly even all the way across. That's really what you want to see, and it makes cooking a lot easier. Testing the 600 degree limit's a little bit harder because our oven only goes to 500 degrees. So we just cranked it all the way up to the maximum, took the pan, threw it in the oven, and let it sit in there for about 30 minutes. Over the last couple of months, we've done that repeatedly with several of the pans, and we haven't seen any indication that there's any kind of warping, or bowing, or permanent discoloration, or anything like that. Also, we'd like to add a note that we did not try testing the pan inside the oven with the lid on. Even though Ninja said it's okay for short periods of time, it's not something that I really think is a good idea. When you have it inside your oven, you probably don't really want to have it covered anyway. The handles on the pans and lids all stayed nice and cool unless you grab them right up close to where they're riveted into the pan surface. So there was no risk of burning yourself on a pan that's been sitting on the range for a while. One thing to remember though is if you put the pan inside the oven, that handle's gonna get hot. I don't care what it's made out of. So if you're putting stuff in there, be sure you're using an oven mitt when you bring it out because you will burn the crap out of yourself. Heat retention on the Everclads is really, really good. For all the cooking we did on the burners, we never had to have the temperature any higher than medium. When these pans get hot, they tend to stay hot. So you don't have to have the heat cranked way up in order to maintain the temperature. But that's a pretty common thing with any decent stainless steel pan. The last thing we tested was to see how easy these pans are to clean up. As long as they properly preheat, you can see that a lot of stuff doesn't really stick to them. We even made some Japanese beef curry in them. Not even the sauce really ended up sticking to the pan. In the couple of cases where we did have a little bit of crust stick to them, all we had to do was take a little bit of hot water, pour them into the pan, heat them back up, and we were just able to use a Teflon skillet to scrape all that stuff right off the bottom. In every instance, we had no trouble getting everything to come off of the pan without any kind of real effort at all. After that, all it took was a little bit of soap and water and everything came super clean. I still recommend using a little bit of Barkeeper's Friend every so often to get those things to polish up really nice though. And if you get any little burns on the surface, that'll take all those off as well. That being said, once again, that's not something that is exclusive to the Ninja pans, but to pretty much any stainless steel pans that you get. For me, the Ninja Everclad pans were surprisingly good. They look nice, perform well, are priced competitively, and the set actually contains a really nice range of sizes. All the gripes that we did have about them were actually pretty minor. 
If you're in the market for some stainless pans that don't break the bank, then you might want to take a look at these. If you'd like a little bit more information about these Ninja stainless pans, we do have an Amazon affiliate link to them down in the description of the video. If you buy anything through those links, we do make a small commission, but it doesn't change the price that you pay one cent. If you like this video, then you might like this video right here where we review the Ninja Never Stick pans. We've had ours for over a year and they really haven't given us a whole lot to complain about. Well, that's it for now. I hope to see you back again here really soon. And until that time, I'm Joe and I hope you have a phenomenal day. Take it easy.